Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with God's word. Thank you for joining me again, and I hope you've been following us all week because we, this is an exciting study on the 16th chapter of Acts. It has to be the most action-packed chapter, one of the most action-packed chapters in the Bible. I mean, if you were to talk about action-packed chapters, you'd have to think about um, the uh, 14th chapter of Exodus, where you have a story of the crossing of the Red Sea. Um, you have to think about the story of Gideon in the book of Judges. But you're talking about an action-packed story. Acts chapter 16 is a powerful story. And we learned from Acts chapter 16 that the bee that stings is the bee that produces honey also. And the things that we think is stinging us, uh, from God's perspective, well, I'm, I'm, no, if all you see is the sting, you're going to miss the honey. And from God's perspective, what we think is the stinger is really something that's quite sweet. It's, it's the honey. And here Paul is, Paul is in jail with Silas. And you know the story of Paul and Silas in jail. You've heard many preachers preach about Paul and Silas in a Philippian jail cell. But at midnight, they started singing praises to God. But we don't emphasize what got them put in jail. What got them put in jail was their uh, denunciation of exploitation, the exploitation of a woman who was a slave girl who had a spirit of divination. She was able to predict the future, but she was exploited. And her, her owner, she should never own someone, her owners uh, took advantage of her. And Paul was able to deliver her by the power of God from the demonic. And they lost money because she's now saved. She's not participating in her own exploitation. Well, Paul is arrested. Paul and Silas put in jail. Those who owned uh, the slave girl appealed to racist nationalistic impulses. The same racism that we have in, in, in our society today that Donald Trump uh, pandered to in white Americans is the same thing that the owners of the slave girl did to the magistrates and people there uh, in Philippi. And Paul was arrested. Paul is severely beaten. Paul is put in solitary confinement in stocks, but at midnight. But what a powerful conjunction. But I mean, anytime you see that word, but that means there's a, the story is going in a different direction. You think it's going one way, but it's going a different way. You think that Paul's going to be complaining, but at midnight, Paul and Silas are singing and praising praying and singing to God. And we are told in verse 25, look at this again. In verse 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Up to this point, all we have seen is women. Where are the men? Well, the men are in jail. And that's why God allowed Paul to go to the prison, put him there because that's where Paul needed to be to reach the brothers. And this is almost like what's going on in our world today in the black community. The men are in jail and Paul is singing. Now, Paul and Silas are in jail because they've done a good thing. But there's some brothers who are in jail. Uh, you got some pretty heart and guys there, but they're listening to Paul sing. Um, there's a prison in New York or a jail in New York called Sing Sing Prison. It's, it's in New York. I think it is. It's called Sing Sing. Well, this is kind of a Sing Sing because Paul and Silas, Paul is singing and Silas is singing. So it's Sing Sing. And the prisoners are listening to them. They're listening in this smelly, dark, dingy, rat infested, vermin infested, germ infested prison, Paul is singing. And who is listening? Let me tell you who's listening to Paul sing. Ray Ray's there. 
Ray Ray, who used to sell drugs and crack, is there listening to Paul saying. Remember Eastside Easy, Eastside Easy, who is the leader of the uh, Bethlehem Crips. Well, he's there also. Uh, you got Big Tank there. Remember Big Tank, Big Bouncer Tank, Big Tank's there. Easy, Easy, Easy's there. Ray Ray, the crack dealer's there, and they all are listening to Paul and Silas saying, saying. I heard people, and they're thinking, I've heard people curse before in situations like this. I've heard people moan before. I've heard people complain before, but I've never heard people sing before. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Your greatest concert will not be in the daylight. Anybody can sing at daylight. Your greatest concert is going to be at midnight when you have no reason to sing, but you sing anyway, not because you feel like it. You don't sing because things are good. You sing because it makes you feel good to know that God is in control. It's the greatest concert you will ever sing. Now, listen, the prisoners were listening. When Paul was singing, because it says he was singing to God, he was not singing to the prisoners, he was singing to God. So they are totally unaware that people are listening to them. What I'm trying to say is this, is that sometimes we have influence and we're affecting others and we're encouraging others and we are, and it's, it's, it's unconscious influence. We are influencing people sometimes in an unconscious way. In other words, people are listening to us, watching us, observing us, and we're not conscious that they're listening. Paul does not say Paul knew they were listening, but they were listening. And the reason we have to be careful how we behave and how we respond to the stings of life is because someone's watching, saying, I wonder how they are going to respond to the stings of life. I remember hearing about a preacher who was also a carpenter and this pastor carpenter was building a deck on the back of his house. And there was a little kid chewing gum, just watching him for an hour, an hour, just watching. And the pastor looked at him and said, Come on, do you want me to teach you how to do some carpentry? Is, that's why, is that why you're watching? And the kid said, nah, that's not why I'm watching. He said, I'm watching because I want to see how a preacher responds and what a preacher says when he hits his thumb with the hammer. Now, I know how everybody else responds when they hit their thumb with the hammer. But I wonder how a preacher responds when he hits his thumb with the hammer. And there are people who are watching you to see how you respond to setbacks, to disappointments, to tragedy. And for them to sing at midnight means that the prisoners, the other men who are there are saying, you know what? I wonder what they have that I don't have that I need to get. It is critically important that Christian men be men of integrity because there are other men who are watching us and don't need just role models, but they need real models. Please remember that God is gonna call you to sing sometimes at midnight. It will be midnight in your life. It will be your greatest concert. And we're going to see in a moment, it's not only a great concert, but he, Paul's going to literally bring the house down. You'll see in a moment what I mean. In fact, that you'll see that tomorrow, but he's going to bring the house down. But more importantly, people were listening and people were watching and people got saved. And that's the honey. Because what the devil meant for evil, God, as God always does, used it for good. You know, Paul was beat up and Paul was beat down, but it wasn't beaten back. And Paul was beat up and beat down, but the plan of God was not beat back. The plan of God was advanced. And please know that sometimes 
when life beats you up and beats you down, that does not mean you're being beat back. The plans of God are being advanced, even when you've been beat up, even when you're being beat down, there's somebody that's going to benefit from it. The prisoners are listening and God's purpose get advanced in it because the same bee that produces a stinger, it's also a bee that produces the honey. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Uh, bless your people. Help us and give us the strength to sing at midnight because there's somebody who's watching us to see how we act and what we say when we hit our thumb with the hammer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church home, I'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church as a virtual member. I am convinced that this tool that uh, we have to communicate uh, online through whatever platform you're viewing this is a gift from God that we're going to use to the glory of God. And the key is just being connected. And you can become a connected to the people of God and to an online community church by contacting us, emailing us, newstart at sncLive.org. We'll be praying for you. We hope that you'll contact us. We will get back with you. But until we meet again tomorrow, we'll pick up on this theme tomorrow. Remember during COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is still on the throne. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.